Hi hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I will talk about by 2018, four strongest and most stable countries that you can invest in their housing markets, okay? The properties, okay? That means that we're choosing a housing market that has strong and solid economy behind and also stable capital inflow to the countries that we will look up to today. And there are three factors and signal that we'll look at today. Then those are the four countries that have the strongest rebound or growth in their housing markets. So first of all, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and also like my Facebook page and then you'll be one of the first ones who see our latest videos. So please like and share this video to your friends. If there are friends or relatives that are really concerned about the housing markets, you can more or less look at these three signals and then probably you'll understand more about the housing market within your country, okay? So this is something that we have done a lot of statistical correlations, okay? So there are three factors. The first First factor is our secret weapon of cash inflow. So that is something that I'm not going to talk about today, but out of all the economic data and statistics and indicators, that is the most correlated against the housing market. That is the most correlated. That is about the money inflow. That's the first factor. And the second factor is the unemployment rate. Whether or not they have a healthy economy and people are working, that is the key to housing market. Okay, the third one is the government the policies, including the interest rate high policies, whether or not the country is having a really strong growth in the economy that they will going to raise the interest rate. That is another factor. So the money flow will rate around 50% and the other two will be splitting among the 50% one each of around 25% of the factor influencing the housing market. So the first country is Canada, right? So Canada is a place that actually I made another video like in May or April that the home capital is going to be bankrupt and people really panic and May and June turnovers in the housing market is dropped by 90%, right? So then I made another video saying that Canada housing markets, it will eventually go up and hit historic high again and again. So whenever there's adjustment, if even though people are panic because I think that there's nothing to panic, is the biggest non-banking mortgage company, right? But that's not the biggest one, okay? So the key is about if the market is eventually going up, if the supply is under demand, that is the key. As long as the factors are there, even it go bankrupt, the businesses will be split among social bank, TD bank, right? So by the time I make this video, Ron Buffett has invested in it. Not only that he's not using his cash, he's only using two billion Canadian dollars Credit line of credit, okay? So if home behavioral lists it, it will use his credit, but he's not paying any cash. And then he sort of acquired some piece of skin in the housing market, okay? So and then he also invested in another housing related company in the United States, okay? So why he's doing that? Because Canada's economy is pretty strong. Look at the unemployment rate. It's going down from 7.3 to now almost 6.5, okay? So it's because of the energy and price of the crude oil is going up back to stability, so then the GDP is going to be good and people and investors is expecting the housing market in Canada to be doing better. And not only that, by the end of the year, the government of Canada has mentioned that they will at least raise the interest rate for one more time by the end of the year. So looking at this chart, the probability of interest rate hike is going to be 76%. 76% is pretty, pretty solid. And it's more promising than United States, right? They always say raise the interest rate and then say, oh, I'm not going to do that this time, I'll do it next time, right? So it is pretty promising that you can take a look at. And the second country is China, okay? So if you don't know that the housing market in China was grew by almost double in specific areas and cities like Shenzhen, close to Hong Kong, it's very, very crazy. If you understand that, you'll be really surprised that I still talk about this market today. So yes, I'm talking about this because the key is money flow. The money inflow is tremendously beautiful going to Canada and China, okay? So because of this reason, we believe that the growth of the housing markets is supported by real cash and real capital behind. It's just not like that the housing markets was going up and down, but without truly new capital inflow flowing into the country. That is the key, okay? So the GDP is going to be good because if you 
do know that the second quarter of Chinese GDP was 6.9% uh, and it was expected like 6.7 or 6.8% and the whole year the target is 6.5% so the GDP is pretty good so you guys can take a look at the housing market in China or there's an ETF or funds that is kind of investing in the housing market in China that you can consider the third country is Israel so if you don't know anything about Israel you can ask me because I'm really really starting to get familiar with startups okay so why startups because startups is the key in United States we all know that and the second country globally is Israel so those policies those restrictions those discounts Every, anything happening in Israel is about startups, okay? In 2015, Israel startups collectively raised 4.4 billion in the VC, venture capital funds, okay? So it's 30% grow higher than last year. And this growth is not slowing down at all. But that's the key because the whole country is talking about startups, venture capitals, and stuff like that. People are really reluctant in building houses. That's statistic. Literally, they are really reluctant in building houses. But they understand that because of the inflow of the employees from the United States or UK to Israel, right? The housing market is really, really solid. But they really need to supply, right? Otherwise, the price will be going up really, really high. Okay, so they have just import imported 6,000 laborers from China to build houses literally that's fact okay but that also take times even though after they have built their houses the supply and demand is still there's a big gap in between so with the solid economy and the growth if you remember when Donald Trump was elected to be the United States president people were really worried about the big tax like Google and Apple right people are really against what he's saying about discrimination and stuff like that and so big chunk of the people from Google and Facebook are actually from Israel okay Israel so people leaving United States to Israel not that not going back to the countries is people who used to live in the United States they go to Israel and do startups and stuff like that so unemployment rate is now close to 4%. This is a really good chance that you can kick into the housing market if you want because the unemployment rate is going up a little bit, but as long as it's still below 5%, by definition, it's full employment. Full employment in the country, okay? So the last one, you'll be really surprised, okay? You will be really surprised. This is really, really crazy, the country, because before the last one, hopefully you can remember to subscribe to the channel and like my Facebook page and please like and share this video to your friends. If they're worried and concerned and have some questions about this housing market, they can also comment in the comments box below. I will reply each of you daily, okay? I try to do it daily, okay? So the last country is Bulgaria. So by looking at the chart, just the first quarter of the housing market is going up by almost 10%. 10% for the housing market. So this is the country that is a little bit riskier, but there's a reason why. The GDP growth is very stable. It's 3.5 to 4%. And also that the unemployment rate is going down. It's a country within the Eurozone, but there are few countries within the Eurozone that are doing policies on their own. For example, there's a visa they're going to do. Whatever, whichever country that is signed up to the visa, people within this country can move around, live, work, there and then this is something that Bulgaria is doing and sign up for and if you immigrate to there there's no time limits no money limit no age limit and you have like half a year you can stay there so it's really really loose and really really welcoming in welcoming any foreigners to that country so we will say that oh damn the economy in that country is pretty bad right that's why they have to do something like that Yes, that's true. But because of these policies, people really literally going to live there and work there or just chill there, right? Looking at the sea and beach and just the slow pace. And then that is also another big chunk of demand inserting in that country. So I'm not saying this is a very stable country that you should invest in, but it may be a little bit surprised that by next year, this would be one of the four countries that will be doing pretty good in the housing market but the most stable one i would choose is canada so with the economy with the policies and by immigrations into the canada the main in chinese the rich people going to canada has surpassed uk is going after us okay so with this huge chunk of demand whether we like it or not the housing market is supported by capital by people by immigration okay so the second most stable and the housing market the price will be doing better could be Israel okay not China China is pretty stable but 
is something that is stuck to our head because the housing market in China is pretty much crazy and President Xi, he's doing a lot to push the fire and push the housing market back down so that normal people can start to buy a normal house for themselves but whenever there are policies happening in China people outside of China will think that oh it's another hoax and it's other fake news and they may really speculate too much and that affects the housing market in China not that the economy is bad because the economy is pretty pretty good okay so that's about it what I want to talk to you today so please like and share this video to your friends. Before next time, I'm Greg. I wish you all the best. Investing, be easy. Goodbye.